So I'll bring this uh, meeting, a uh, regular meeting of council to order for August the 2nd, 2022. Result of the agenda for the August 2nd, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the July 5th, 2022 regular council meeting and the July 6th, 2022 special meeting uh, for the arena be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Four and 4.1. Result of the council open the public hearing for local improvement plan one 2022 for the replacement of Swan River Fire Department pumper one with all the required equipment. Moved by the Premier Wintoni, second by Councilor White. All in favor? Carried. The purpose of the hearing is to uh, he, sorry, the purpose of the hearing is to hear any potential taxpayer who wishes to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection to the local improvement plan for the replacement of Swan River Fire Pump, uh, Department Pumper 1 with all the required equipment. I ask that any person making representation uh, ask, or asking questions or register an objection to the local improvement plan, please state their name uh, and their civic address. So with that, I will begin. Uh, firstly, uh, just so Council sees here, that we have received two, um, I guess, mail-in or email-in objections. And uh, do we have anybody else that wants to step forward? Okay, so you come to the table here. <coughs> please state your name and your civic address for the Hi. record, please. Derek Boychuk, 11 Parkway Drive. Okay, thank you and welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, you can proceed. I, I would like more information on the reasoning for purchasing um, a pumper of this magnitude, of this cost, uh, considering the fact that it's well known that the community is going to have experience a huge cost in an arena upgrade within the next year or two. And as a taxpayer of not only a residential, but business, in talking to my business compart or uh, um, people around the community, we're very concerned regarding where this money is going to come from and how every year we see always increases in taxes. And the scary part of this one is there's no, um, this is a huge purchase. This is not a, this is not a used purchase. This is a new purchase of $900,000 that's going to be all borrowed. Um, and it's very concerning for me because I think a decision of this magnitude needs to be done uh, and held off until we find out what's going on with that arena. Because I was at the open house when you guys had the open house at the arena, and <clears throat> obviously a number of you were there, and there was a huge concern regarding that the arena may not make even this year. And that even last year there was concern regarding a crack that had, had opened up or, or, or was, would, would almost, almost caused uh, a catastrophe to the season of the hockey team or hockey in general in the, in the community. And um, it's, it's a little bit scary when, when we can just decide to, hey, let's go, let's go buy a new pumper truck. Uh, is, that, is that the only option out there? Um, uh, Councillor Deloria gave me a little bit of a, a briefing of, 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 of the reasoning for it. Um, I want to know is why didn't we not, why are we not, why are we looking at a used pumper truck? Why are we purchasing a new pumper truck and all its components? Why are not we out salvaging what we can out of what we have? Uh, why aren't we putting spending to to minimize spending? Um, I, I, you know, some of you, I, 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 I challenge you. Some of you are business owners in this community, and I challenge you to say, um, if this was your money, and you own this business, would you go out and buy a brand new pumper truck, Mr. Bobick? You were a business. You owned. You owned. You're a construction business. If you needed a new loader, you needed another loader. Would you go and buy a brand new loader? Or would you search out and look up that used loader first? You're right. Yep. So you, you asked the question, you're asking the question why? Is that what your question is? Yes. Okay. 
So then maybe I can let um, uh, the fire chief, uh, he can respond to that. And then you can hear what he has saying. I don't know if Councilor Morio wants to say anything, but I'll first hear from uh, uh, the fire chief. Well, so first of all, all our main drive right now is the age of the truck. It's 27 years old. Um, the age of the truck, in fact, it affects our insurance rating within the town. A truck past 25 years old is not recognized by underwriters insurance <coughs> as a valid fire truck. Um, we did take a look at, at used. Um, unfortunately, anything that fits our time frame as a used unit isn't available, as well as demos. So we tried uh, four different manufacturers that we know of. Uh, there are no available demos, there are no available used. Uh, we were informed by one, one uh, company that used vehicles right now are going to as high as 60 to 70% the cost of new. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention too is the, the amount we're asking for, uh, $900,000 is that a high amount um this truck will be come under that uh, we have no pricing yet other than budgetary but it should come under that nine hundred thousand quite easily but we didn't want to leave a tight or no window uh, in case we ran into supply issues that type of stuff um manufactured trucks right now there's an 18 to 24 month waiting period and uh the price increase is an average seventy thousand dollars a year uh, for every year you wait so we did look at the options of use, we did look at the options of demo, um, we did look at the age of the truck, uh, the equipment on it, uh, it's fair to mention that the hoses and stuff on it are still from the 80s and the 2000s, uh, that's why we're asking for equipment with this truck, um, because we have to upgrade our hoses, that type of things. Uh, this truck is designed for an in-town truck, it's not a rural truck, um, it, won't all, it won't have a ton of water, the one we are first proposing had 3,000 gallons of water on it, um, in order to lower the costs and everything associated with it, the officers got together and we decided that we would replace Pumper 1 with what we have in Pumper 1. Okay, thank you. Um, anything from you there, Councilor Morial? Um, Councilor Morial is the Chair for Protective Services. Okay. Um, so, in all our deliberations with our partnering municipalities, um, with regarding fire protection, that we've been advocating that we all, as a valley, as with all of the departments, follow the the NFPA or the National Fire Protection Agency's uh, standards. And as Chief Dorchuk uh, has mentioned, uh, Pumper One is 27 years old, which is now uh, no longer able to be considered a, f a frontline truck, and Pumper Two, which is currently our frontline truck I believe is 13 years and after 15 years a truck cannot be a, a frontline truck it can be moved to a secondary like that pumper one is at this time so if we don't get a truck replaced we're gonna end up in a spot where in within two years time we won't have a frontline certified truck which will affect our insurance our fire rating which will negatively affect all the insurance rates within the town so um also if we don't have two certified trucks um uh, for our offensive uh, um, tactics or offensive um, interior tax of buildings would have to cease if we only had one it would be a strictly a defensive fire department so there would be no interior searches for victims or anything like that so so um, if we want the services of a of um, a reliable, effective uh, fire department that can do the services that we are expecting of them. We need a second, like two trucks. So, um, so based, like based on that, um, I uh, this this is life safety equipment. Um, this to me uh, is way above the needs of other like graders garbage trucks this is this is people's houses lives business that rely on this equipment we have a 27 year old truck that is already um, having some mechanical issues that is failing on scenes so we don't want to be responding to emergencies and having these trucks fail where we could end up losing life so, so it's, uh... all right um, if I may mr. mayor yeah, yeah go ahead 
Um, also, it's, it's safe to mention that uh, we are following the replacement plan that Chief LeBron presented to Council in 2009. Uh, at that time, the uh, 81 CPA pumper was scheduled for replacement in 2010, which is our newest truck. Um, our rescue was scheduled in 2012. We changed it in 2014. Uh, the pumper one was scheduled in 2017 at the 25 year mark. It has not been done. And our utility truck was uh, changed out in 2020. So we are following schedules that are put out. It's not just a whim thing that we decided hey, this year we need a fire truck. Um, it has been a planned event. Anything further? I guess I, I, I'm not denying the fact that maybe we need a fire truck, but I guess the timing of a buyer and purchasing a nine hundred thousand uh, dollar fire truck doesn't really confide in the fact that that there's other big spends going to come to the community. And as a business owner and as a res resident of Swan River, and I've invested a lot of money in this community, and having taxes go up two hundred dollars, eighty dollars a month or a year for the last how many years? is not good for bringing people into the community. And I understand the fact that we need a fire truck and we need a, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I understand the fact that, uh, that, that that's an important purchase. However, what I'm asking for is I object to the fact of purchasing this truck at this time until we find out what's wrong going on with the arena. And if we are gonna be purchasing a truck, then we look for, definitely look for a used truck. If it takes a year or a year and a half to get a used truck, and so be it. Okay. Is that everything? That's everything. Anybody else want to comment or? Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to concert all of it. Uh, just to put it in perspective, it's 0 0.372 mills every year. What would that work out to per 100,000 of assessment? dollars so for every hundred thousand of assessment, your house or your building, you're gonna pay three hundred and seventy-two dollars. Go ahead. Uh, just just a thought. Uh, I wonder, uh, Council Moore, your comments. Uh, I appreciate uh, Chief Fedorchuk's. I appreciate. Have you guys considered doing a news release to our local media's, suggesting the pros and cons, new, used, and and why Council is considering this? It is something we can uh, consider uh, or look at doing. So. Thank you. Councilor Delorier. Just to correct Councilor Boggs, it would be $37.20 yeah, per, per 100000 $37? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So I guess with that, if somebody wants to calculate, you know, your house is 220 There's three times 20. That's just one. That's just one purchase. That's right. <clears throat> right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now we also, understanding of an arena, the cheapest fix of the arena is going to be what, five, six million? Not necessarily. No. Well, you don't know that. You're, 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 yeah. But it's going to be. So, what's the tax increase going to be on that? Uh, how about the lagoon that my understanding is, is needs upgrades as well? So are you going to go back to the well again a year from now? Reason? There's people in this with fixed incomes, with inflation the way it is, with the price of fuel the way it is, with groceries the way they are. Are we thinking smartly here in purchasing at this time? Should we not think about purchasing our... I mean, it's, it's nice to, to want a new truck, but... Is it really needed a new truck? Think of your personal purchases. Yes, I'd like to drive a new truck every day, but is it smart to drive a new truck every day? Is it affordable to drive a new truck every year? Not necessarily. I just think that you know you around the table, we voted for you all of you around the table. And, and to be honest with you, the, the free spending, the, 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 the easy way to get money without thinking and taking into consideration the fact that someone has to pay for it. And we are a high taxed community. Sometimes I think we need to start realize that we, we, we as individuals and residents of the community like to drink champagne, but we can really only afford ginger ale. 
I think we need to start thinking and start, start acting like individuals and businesses run this community like a business. And we, 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 we replace the needs, not the wants. Thank you. Chief Orchard has his hand up. Oh, Chief Orchard, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to, to, to make sure I made the point again. The amount that's on the, the, the loan or the uh, levy is a, is a high bench. Um, until we get approval to go ahead and actually go to RFP, uh, we won't know what the actual cost is on what we are asking for until we get those numbers, which I am 99% confident is going to be nowhere near $900,000. Um, as far as uh, the wants and needs, we need this truck if we're going to perform the services. Um, just an example of what these trucks can do, uh, and, and not to make it personal or anything, Mr. Wojciech, but we did attend a fire at, at the theater, and at that time we did both of our trucks plus minotonces. Um, part of this rolls into is our firefighter safety and their effectiveness, effectiveness of what they can do. Um, we're not a department to just ask for toys because we want toys. Okay, thank you. Councilor White. Just a general comment. Thank you for uh, your thoughts, your comments. Uh, it would be unfair to say we certainly haven't talked about and debated them, and we have. But it's nice to hear from uh, the bosses, and you're our boss, and the discussion in my mind. And I'm certainly, I'm certain uh, we will take your comments uh, to heart. Good. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor. You know, uh, my position all along, I don't deny the fact that this is a needed vehicle. You know, if, if my kid was sleeping in the house and my house was on fire, I'd want the fire department to be able to go into my house, not just fight it from the outside. Um, so I, I don't deny that. My position all, all along is in three months there will be an election. We may have neighbors that are much more cooperative and we may not be in the situation where, that we are now having to do this alone. You know, and, and my position would be the same thing for the arena. Or we can't, we got to stop doing this alone. We cannot do it alone anymore. It, 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 we're just too small and the costs are too large. So my position from, from day one since we've been discussing this truck has been like, Let's just hold off. I'm not saying we shouldn't buy it or don't buy it. I just hold off to see what happens in now. It's only what two and a half months time. Um, you know, we may end up exactly where we are now in November 1st. I'll be a pie on my face or whatever. October 25th, I'll have pie on my face. I, I'm willing to take that risk over a million dollars for the value. We still have an operational fire truck right now. Um, so I, 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 my position all along has been that, and I, I think that we need to see if we can extend the olive branch once more and try and work together. I, you know, I don't, I think it's probably fruitless until after the election, but you know what? I think it's worth, worth, uh, waiting two and a half months for right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Merrill, No, no, I'm okay, actually. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Councilor <coughs> Morio. Um, thank you, Mr. Boychuk, for your, your comments. They're much appreciated, and uh, they're not on deaf ears. I, I totally agree with you 100%. It didn't, like, just needs and wants. Um, where I, me as an emergency uh, responder myself, um, we don't usually like get it into the habit of buying used equipment to replace your used equipment. Usually if you have a five-year-old used emergency vehicle, there's a reason why that thing is used and not with its current original provider. It's, it's likely a lemon or some issue or not saying that they're all like that. And we definitely we are looking uh, for the chief and his team. Um, as for the, the funds, it was um, like, as you had mentioned, the, like there's needs and wants. In my mind, this is a need, um, but there is a lot of wants that people are getting, like getting the champagne service on a lot of other services in the town where we can, come budget time, make some significant adjustments for that. Because there are some champagne services in this town that people are wanting for, but they're not, now they're starting to realize what the, uh, 
with the inflation and that, that uh, it is getting um, expensive to have those champagne services, as you say. Um, all as I know is that with the supply chain stuff, as to Councilor Glorious, if we wait um, three, three months, an order's not going to go, like if the dynamics don't change in other councils, the order's not going in October 25th or 26th. It's going to have to be debated and bought or passed by that new council that's even around this table. So a delay of two, two and a half months to the next election is not that. It's going to be more. Realistically, we're down five months. Does he even have that discussion around this table? And then to start entertaining discussions with potentially maybe new councils at the other tables, that's time down the road. We know every month that this uh, order or RFP is delayed, the cost of those trucks go up. Even with just the cost of inflation, this truck has already gone up 5% since we started this. So the more we delay this, this, this piece of equipment just keeps going up in price. And even the supply chains, it went from 18 months delivery, now it's 18 months to two years delivery. So there will be a, potentially a time frame where we may not be able to, uh, even if we look at a new truck uh, after, there could be a break in service of what our capabilities are in there. So. It's all stuff that has to be like factors in to make our decision. Okay, so thank you. Anything further? Go ahead. Uh, and this is just my personal thought, just noticed in the parade, there seem to be a lot of fire trucks in the parade. We have a neighboring municipality that's starting a fire department. I do believe that we should look at working together. I don't know if that brings into the factor that they could be mutual aid together. I think we have a really strong point right here now to maybe step up to the plate and meet with our neighbors and see if they may be able to provide us with some of the uh, help that we've given them over the years since they're starting a new fire department. Mutual aid works both ways. Why we should exhaust that avenue. Uh, Chief Rorja. Uh, thank you. Further to Councillor Bobbick's comments, um, to, to, to put our residents uh, under the care of an untried, untested department who is yet to respond to a call at this point uh, and delaying our purchases because of it, I, I would recommend it. Okay. I think we're getting a little away from the, the, uh, the hearings, so if there's any other Representation. Darcy, did you want to speak at all? Okay. All right. Well, if that uh, is everyone's uh, spoke, then I will uh, close the hearing. Um, close the public hearing for local improvement plan number one, 2022, at 7.53 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councilor Delorier, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, thanks guys for coming in. Oh, go ahead. I should just ask a question. So I'm not familiar with municipal politics here. You, Councilor Marno say that, that this is gonna take longer. Like, so what's the process here? This is the hearing for purchasing this. What is the process from here to actually uh, make giving them authority to purchase the Equipment. So we have to have like we have three readings. Yeah. To make it a bylaw, okay? okay. To actually go uh, for administration, to actually go through the process of uh, doing an RFP, as an example, and then uh, looking at the purchase and then going from there. But if Mr. Poole wants to expand on that, he can. I was actually going to see if CFO Ganita wanted to answer that. CFO Ganita. The mayor described the process accurately. Uh, so, Mr. Bochek, you were asked, so the, tonight is the public hearing and then first reading to the bylaw. Um, from that, then the Chiefs is going to prepare, along with the administration, the RFP um, of what type of truck is and put it out there. Uh, and it's going to be a request for proposal, not a tender. 
so that it can go change. Then that's, and while that's happening, <coughs> this um, bylaw goes to the Public Utilities Board, not Public Utilities, um, the Municipal Board. Municipal Board for their approval. And while that's happening, the RFP goes through a thing, and then we get the results back from the vendors. And then the council decides if we go with one of those, but we also have to go through second reading and third reading. So there's three more after, if, it, if tonight's first reading passes, there's still three other hurdles that have to go before the final decision. And in reality, it can take till fall time, whereas Council Dory is saying it goes up with maybe October by the time, or even past that, that the RFPs and the design and a, a final price to be decided on to go ahead would even occur. So it's um, most like process, a so most likely scenario is that uh, the, the fall council will, will be the ones making the decision. The final. Quite possibly. Yeah, yes. like close. So. So. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. All right, thanks for coming out. Okay, so we'll move on then to six six point one. There's all the building permits 31, 22 through 38, 22 with a estimated value of $426,227 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by <coughs> Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor White. Do you need a building permit to put a fire pit in your backyard? Yes, you do. Okay, thank you. There's certain uh, parameters that you need to follow as far as how far away from the house it is or from anything that could burn and also uh, a cover so that sparks and that can't be flying around. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.1 Resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by There's no Director of Public Works report. Oh, right, there isn't either. Why am I reading that? Um, Resolve the Protective Services report for June the 2000, for June 2022 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Guantoni, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, result of the June 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.4, Council reports. Start with Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Always got to put me on the spot first thing. Hey? Well, not always. <laughs> um, just a big shout out to our community for hosting the uh, Northwest Roundup and Exhibition that hasn't been in our community for three years. Thank you to all the counselors and uh, individuals within the community that volunteered um, at any point throughout that uh, entire weekend. And, and it's a great thing for our community to bring in uh, um, economic development to the uh, to the valley, so uh, kudos to the Northwest Roundup Committee and everyone else within our community, <coughs> as well as big congratulations, of course, to our community for the announcement of a CT scanner um, coming there. Thank you, Your Worship and Councillor White for being there to uh, be part of that announcement as well. Other than that, I don't have anything further. Okay. Councillor Morio, thank you. Um, on the 26th, I attended our regular cow meeting. Uh, where we just had general updates um, from the department heads. Um, I attended um, the announcement by the Premier and the Minister of Health and Brian Schoenberg's on the CT scanner along with the Retina um, pilot project in Dauphin. Um, I understand there will be some further uh, health announcements coming here for the Valley. But, uh, they'll be coming in due course. Um, but it's definitely a great uh, tool and it's a, it's a long-term project that the town has been working on through many councils and government officials and RHAs. 
so that'll be a definitely a service that will better the economy here for us so um, I attended the parade uh, which was good to see first one in two years great to see all the uh, public that was out there um, after that um, after the parade I was managed to uh, have a, a short discussion with uh, Premier Stephenson when she was here before she headed back to uh, Winnipeg where I reiterated or brought to her attention a lot of the crime issues uh, concerns that we had here and our um, concern with the RCMP costs spiraling out of control which uh, she assured me that uh, that the province feels the same way because they pick up the provincial tab for the rural municipalities also so they share uh, the same concerns we had um, then I met uh, briefly again with uh, Minister Cullen um, who's the Minister of uh, the Northern Economic uh, stuff. Uh, so we talked about uh, some economic uh, issues or potential <coughs> in the valley. But I also brought up to him um, uh, with regards to um, the fire trucks also. With the grant. He is not the minister that's responsible for it, but he put the plug in his ear um, regarding uh, making that grant that the province had a couple of years ago for firefighting equipment uh, to make that on a more permanent uh, basis where municipalities would be able to tap into a biannual grant or something like that that be able to address some of these issues. So uh, he didn't shoot it down, so it was something that he looked at with interest. So, um, and then I finally had a, a little bit more in depth discussion with <coughs> Minister Swan, uh, who's the Minister of Culture, Sport, and Recreation. Um, I brought him up to on our issues with the arena as he I had forwarded you guys the other day um, the new hundred million dollar grant over three years uh, with that he said that'd be a perfect fit our arena repair for that grant uh, says basically it's the building sustainable uh, communities grant on steroids so I encourage and I'll pass on the contact information from uh, our community or recreation departments on that because they have that money and they would like to get it spent sooner than later and and he thought that that would be a great fit for that provided that there's no hiccups or challenges um, with, what, what, with that, so. uh, thank you for doing that but what is the timeline on the application did he say the applications <laughs> open August 15th so like there's three years, so each year there'll be an intake, but this year's intake opens, I think, August 15th or 17th. Or 16th, actually. Yeah. yeah, so. Oh, you've been looking into it already? Yeah, it's in the fall. Okay. Yeah, so there's some stuff, so I told him that our staff would be in touch with his office to ask any questions and clarify some, make sure that if there's some, potentially, that's a fund where they will come cover up to 50% of the costs up to 5 million bucks. So if it's, a five million dollar repair it's potentially a fund that they kick in two and a half million dollars so so that's definitely something that we need to explore and make sure that uh, we don't run into any conflicts with uh, the building sustainable fund that we already received with it so yeah. um and then as it, i believe it was this morning uh, everybody should have received the results um as an email from AMM regarding the crime survey that was sent out to all municipalities and councillors in the province. So, um, and basically everybody's in the same feelings as where we are. Crime is up, all related to various <coughs> issues, but uh, organized crime, drugs is the key things that's putting out there. So, um, it's not comforting, but we're not alone in this whole situation of the entire province and even Minister Swan who read across the province and his counterparts that he's visited in the states um, or indicate the exact same thing that we're experiencing it's just it's a phenomenon that's happened since pre-COVID that's just spiraling out of control and everybody's having a difficult uh, dif difficult time of uh, reining it in and finding solutions for it that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. <coughs> um, 
First of all, thank you for extending condolences to Wasquehisipi with Mr. Seaford, I mean Mr. Kamach. Uh, I was at a cow meeting and I was at a CTC meeting, Communities of Care. Um, great news about the CT scanner as it's already been said and the rodeo is a success as Deputy Mayor has already mentioned. We had huge crowds, food boosted great. Everybody did well, nothing major, major. We had lots of RCMP presence, I might add, in uniform and out, checking on things. <clears throat> uh, the float went well, thank you David, and thank you to Jordan uh, Rooks and uh, his sons who came and uh, rode on the float with us. Um, the cemetery is looking very clean and tidy, and I noticed there's lots of visitors this past weekend going out there. The road needs fixing, but other than that, it's looking very, very nice. Um, and that's all she wrote. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Bobbick. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, CT scanner. Great news. Uh, perfect timing. Also attended a cow meeting. Uh, just to speak a little bit about, we were talking a little bit about asphalt. I got another spot I found I'd like to come in and talk to you. It's First Street and Norton 13th, and it probably needs some milling, uh, which is it's kind of on a corner, and people are dodging holes, and just something that should be looked at. Also, I'll come and maybe speak to you. I see you're using the crushed asphalt on the landfill road and stuff, but we could probably maybe speak to you a bit about the application of that. There's just other ways of doing it. Keep it from slipping. I had numerous compliments on the work crew. I call them the work crew, the guys with the whippersnippers and the lawnmowers. These were out of town people uh, and residents that commented on how hard they work on hot days and stuff like that. So if we could pass that on, we would really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, just a thought uh, has there been any thought about fencing in the equipment? at the landfill, like putting up a fence, uh, chain link fence with barbed wire around it so you can close the gate at night and save some of the theft that's going on there. We have, it would, it's just cost, the cost, there's not enough theft to So would it be cost. something that would be hard to figure out a cost on or is it, is there a fencing company that you'd say so many feet in a gate and... Yeah, we would, it's a per meter price we would get, yeah. If that's something we could look at, if council wishes it, I just think it would kind of deter. Gives them a little bit. He's got cameras and stuff, but I mean, it, it's so quick and easy for them to come in and then jump back in the bush and go on up the other way. Yeah. yeah. That it could deter or maybe help out the contractor a bit there. So we could maybe look at that cost. Uh, Conrad Departments, have we got any forward movement on that at all? Just same as six months ago, the insurance company says this Christmas they believe they'll have a. This Christmas? Yeah, that's when they decide whether it it is or it isn't. But uh, really, that's it. The, the investigations are done. It's completely up to us. So the fence that we're paying, roughly going to say three hundred seventy dollars a month for around there. Does that bill go directly to the property, or does that go to the insurance company? It'll go to the property owner right now, and what the insurance <coughs> claim will cover that we. So if there wasn't a fence there and somebody got hurt on that property, would that be up to the insurance company? Uh, there's an order to to secure the building, and that's that's coming from us, though. So honestly, I, I don't know. I'd have to check with a lawyer. I'm just saying we're, we're actually benefiting the insurance company by paying for the fence around there at this time, which we don't know if we are going to get paid for. Well, we're, we're the ones who are mandating uh, the fence, so we can choose not to if we don't want to, but we are charging the property owner. So is there, and this is just my personal thoughts, is there any way of sending that bill to the insurance company? We, we, can, we can try, but right now there's no, that's the, that's the thing is we're not going to find out for another six months till they decide whether it's a approved claim or not. So I guess, let it as be, I guess. Like, well, we, if we want to spend the money, we can demolish it tomorrow. But uh, 
we got to spend money. Well, yeah, but I mean, if it's insurance and they'll pay for that, why would we step into that realm? With the chance that it, it's not an approved claim, that if it, it does go through tax, so we, we will. So is there such a thing that the Thomas Warren River has insurance to cover and insurance don't pay? On, no, we wouldn't pay insurance on the off case that someone wouldn't get insurance. No, we wouldn't do that. So every building in Swan River that burns down that doesn't have insurance, we would be liable for it? No, the property owner is now liable if somebody jumps through that fence and hurts themselves, the town is not liable to... No, what I'm saying is if a property burns and, it's, and there's no insurance on it, and if it goes to taxes, we're liable to demolish it. From the point that we own it. If it goes to tax sale and it doesn't go through auction, it does become our property. And that day, then we are liable. It I guess I'm going to the fact like uninsured motorists, your license covers that. We have nothing that covers uninsured buildings. Right. Yeah. Uh, just do any others? Just wait. Uh, I think that the fire chief wanted to uh, comment. Okay. <clears throat> It's, sorry for interrupting. Uh, it's important to note that with this building too, there's also an existing health order, which requires us to secure the property. Okay, thank you. So there, yeah. uh, just another thing, just a great break. It was, that's probably the biggest one I remember. So I don't, you know, my eyes are getting smaller, the break's getting bigger. So I'm getting through. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Uh, I, I agree with the Northwest Roundup compliment you gave the uh, councillor. What, what a wonderful team to do that activity. It's huge for our community to thank them, obviously. Uh, the, uh, the CT scan, we've all echoed our thoughts on that. And I think it's important to acknowledge that G4 was a big part of getting that million bucks in the bank for all our municipal partners. But I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Councillor Mario, uh, your worship. Uh, Jason and Laurie and MLA Wolchuk, but those four people uh, did a lot of the groundwork to make those things happen. And it obviously became a political will. On Tuesday the 18th, I met with the immigrant service team. I really enjoyed them. They're a bunch of happy, happy people. And migrating, immigrating from countries to come to our country, I, just a compliment to them to stay so happy and positive. So I, I, I'm enjoying that committee, sir, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to help them. On the 28th, uh, the CT scan announcement, uh, a big day for our community, and I think it will only improve our, I know it will only improve our health care from a health perspective locally and economically for sure. And I talked to Dr. Burnside uh, just yesterday, and he's comfortable will also help recruit more doctors, which we do need. Uh, August 2nd, I did a half hour, 45 minute interview with CBC specifically about health care and uh, how our community collectively, the, the, our council specifically, has with PMH and other partners uh, done what we've done because we are certainly a model for the rest of the province. PMH was a big help, the community was a big help. And last but not least, I know that uh, Mr. Poole has been talking with uh, a, uh, an entity about some technology that may or may not work. On, they're very comfortable we'll work on our lagoon to get rid of that noxious smell. We actually did a tour up there, uh, Mr. Livingston and I, the other day, and this is unbelievable. So it appears that they may have some of that equipment showing up soon that we will get for free to try it out for two or three months. It runs by solar power, it, it uh, pre oxidizes the water and gets rid of a bunch of stuff. So it costs us nothing, solar powered. So I'm looking forward, I'm guessing it might show up in the next week or two, but we'll be in touch with you as soon as we can. So that, uh, that bouquet is uh, not attractive at all. So I, I thank you for talking with that gentleman and, and looking at options. So that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Gloria. Uh, nothing that hasn't been touched on. I think that we all talked about the CT scan and how awesome that's gonna be. Um, I was a little, a lot, of, a lot of, that was a long time coming, a lot of years of lobbying and work on that. Um, it was good to have the rodeo back in town. You don't, you, I guess you kind of take it for granted. You don't realize how much you miss it till it's till it's not here for three years. And then, uh, yeah, it was, like Councilor Broderick said, the parade was, was awesome. It was uh, really good. I think, it, <coughs> I think it was really good for the community to have that back. 
Um, just one question on your report, uh, Mr. Poole, on the town growth plan. There's a report that you uploaded. I looked for that, but I wasn't able to find that. Oh, it's in camera. Oh, okay. I've been looking in all the folders. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. I guess for myself, it's kind of almost a repeat of what all has been said, but I have to say it too. But uh, the rodeo uh, back uh, in full gear again is, 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 is an awesome thing that has happened. Um, I can't imagine the challenges that the Egg Society had to bring that together. I spoke with the president on Friday and uh, you know, kudos to him and, and the team. They had a lot of challenges over the last three years and uh, they were able to, to bring things together. In fact, they weren't planning this a year ago, which they normally are doing. They were planning this, you know, pretty much from the from the springtime and, and, and getting this put together. So, um, you know, hats off to all those individuals that they were able to uh, uh, get the volunteers. I know that they were still lacking some volunteers and, and I'm sure that that'll improve in the, in the next uh, year and, and years to come. Uh, but definitely a, a good job. And, and I'm walking down in the grounds and seeing the people and the people happy and sitting in the grandstands and watching the rodeo or the chuck wagons or the chariots, you know, people are just happy just to be there again. And, uh, and you could just see that. And, and even the people that are providing the entertainment to us, you know, they, they are just really glad to be back in Swan River again to, to do that. I know Council Friesen, you spent uh, a lot of time down there on the weekend and uh, volunteering and doing what you're, you can. And, uh, and we thank you for uh, taking the time and volunteering uh, down there as well. The um, uh, CT scanner announcement, when, when I first heard that it was going to be official, it was just like, wow, you know, you, you think about Council Glory said, uh, 10 years, maybe 12, I, I don't know, I can't remember when the, this all kind of started happening and it's been a long time and and we've had some really good people working on side with us along the way and Councilor White uh, mentioned uh, a few people and he, you know, said that should be recognized but Councilor White, you need to be recognized too, so for your work and uh, it's been a, a great announcement and, and I'm looking forward to the better service that we have in our community. Uh, like you said, to recruit doctors and nurses, but also to uh, to retain them as well, and providing the service that I think that the people of the Swan River Valley and that are close to us that uh, can have um, better health and health that is readily available in, in other areas of the province. So, a great uh, announcement, and it was nice to have the premier here for a couple days and, and spend some time with us. And I know. So, uh, some of you had a chance to chat with the Premier on, on different uh, topics that are important to this council, to this community, as well as uh, individual ministers, um, where you can have one-on-ones with them, and, and it was a great opportunity, and I thank you for taking the time and, and uh, not only thinking about the CT, but also working on some of the other um, uh, issues that we have, you know, rising out of, uh, you know, our deliberations that we have here, so thank you as well. And the last item that I had was, um, we're all aware of the federal redistribution that's happening right now, and, and right now the uh, there's an opportunity for everyone to have a chance to speak. Uh, Manitoba, there's a there's a, a website that you can go to and, and, and we can have those conversations. We've already seen potentially what the new lines are going to look like. Uh, so this is something that uh, we need to work together and I've obviously spoke with uh, Manitoba's Bozeman and Mountain on uh, the potential looks of the uh, constituency and, and as if none of you looked at it, it's basically it's, it, the federal riding uh, will change where half of the valley will be in Churchill and the other half will be in uh, Swan River or to the south. So it's... Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look good, and I think that we need to uh, work on that to lobby uh, to the to the uh, to the people that are uh, doing this uh, um, uh, this committee right now, working on redistribution. So I just wanted to to bring that up, and and for all of us not to forget, 
and uh, and nudge our neighbors, especially Minnetonans, Bozeman, um, and Mountain, to, uh, to get something uh, to the uh, to the to the board in Swan Valley West. I spoke with the Reeve on Friday and and, and chatted with him about this too, and and they need to submit something as well. And I and I don't think it would be wrong for us to also submit something to uh, to this as well. So with that, that's it for me. Um, I will go to the CEO. Uh, nothing much to report, just to welcome uh, Matt Lennox to our team. He was hired as a <coughs> municipal services team, so our safety officer. He started today. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't have a written report for council, just some follow-up items from the 26th meeting. Okay. So then we'll move on to 8. 8.1, resolved that the town of Swan River purchase a Kaboa B2601HSD tractor from Rough Country Agricultural Limited for $50,000, $50,600 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lantoni. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. So this was put in the budget mm -hmm. last year, right? For this year, yes. Yeah, so this is basically going to be a machine that should be used by the arena staff and uh, the departments. Below. Will it be able to be utilized anywhere else, like cemeteries? Stuff like that? If needed, absolutely. It's so, a town machine and the, the departments help each other out. So. so if one goes down, let's say the machine that does the cemetery, this would be able to cover them? Yes, the public works and rec would like to get Director Fedorcha. Uh, just to be noted in the capital budget, we had $50,000 for the replacement of our tractor that you see here. Uh, that included a blade, a mower, deck, and a cab. But in discussions with Jordan and Darren, um, as a backup, we needed a snowblower as well because our snowblower unit's also aging. So for the extra cost of the snowblower, I believe it's like <laughs> around $7,000, which is going to come out of uh, Public Works Equipment Reserve. Uh, with the understanding that if the trackless goes down, which it's aging, that this can be used on sidewalks around town as well. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Whereas Red, Red Road Compass, in partnership with the Canadian Mental Health Authority, has secured funds from Canadian Heritage for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation community projects and intends to use a portion of the said funds to host a series of free barbecues for community members. Therefore, be it resolved that the alley to the north of 106 Fifth Avenue North, I'm sorry, it didn't say north, north of 106 Fifth Avenue, be closed on August the 10th, 2022, August the 24th, 2022, September the 7th, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, if this would pass, um, would administration be able to communicate that to the neighboring businesses in that area and then publicize it, that, that alley closure? So that people are aware of it and not going through there and no surprises. Idea. That's a good so, idea. Yeah, we can absolutely do that, yeah. Councilor Bobbick? And I also, I guess, I don't know if it would be a big difference, but as long as the ambulance knows that that's very close at the same time. So we would have to put out a road closure. Yeah. Yeah, okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Resolved that the route, as indicated on the application for the Terry Fox run on September the 18th, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Morial. So I take it this is, this is not just road closure, it's just approving the route and then that they'd be having notifications that there's runners on the, the road that motor vehicles would need to be aware of. Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, 
Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Chief for our chat. Sorry, um, for the Terry Fox run every year, uh, the fire department provides pilot vehicles, so there's well warning for any traffic coming up. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <sighs> Carried. 10, 10.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29129 to number 29246, totaling $563,776.13 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll counts checks number 5127 to number 5135, totaling $170,056.16 as listed on Schedule B. Payroll counts checks number 5136 to number 5143, totaling $101,555.95 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $53,943.38 as listed on Schedule D, and direct deposits totaling $775 as listed on Schedule E. Moved by... Councillor Friesen, seconded by Dipper Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? 10.2 Resolve the financial statements for the six months ending June 30th, 2022 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3 Resolved that, sorry, resolved that a grant be made to the community in Bloom Swan River Committee in the amount of $5,000 as included in the 2022 financial plan. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Thanks again for you, to your committee and all the people that have volunteered and done an outstanding job in, in the parks and other areas. I'll pass it along. Thank you. All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas the 2022 capital budget included 23,000 for pool, hall, arena security systems, and the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 transferred from accumulated surplus, of which 23,000 was to fund the purchase of said security systems. And whereas Whereas said security systems have been purchased at a total cost excluding GST of $24,373.42 and whereas $9,474.85 was transferred from accumulated, accumulated surplus to the general operating fund for the pool and hall security systems by resolution 2022-0236 dated May 3rd, 2022. Therefore, be it resolved that $13,525.15 be transferred from accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.5. Whereas the 2022 capital fund included $26,000 for a firefighter turnout gear and the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 transfer from accumulated surplus of which $26,000 was to fund the purchase of the said turnout gear. And whereas the turnout gear has been purchased at a cost excluding GST of $24,817.58. Therefore, be it resolved that $24,817.58 be transferred from the accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Moved by Dipper Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? 
Councillor Bobbick. How many is that? Chief for Dorcha? Six cents. <clears throat> Excuse me, six cents. Yeah. Out of the, we were uh, originally talking about eight. We ended up purchasing six. Uh, Chief for Dorcha, just for our viewers, uh, what is the life uh, the life uh, expectancy of the turnout gear? Ten years. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bobbick. What happened to the old ones? What happens to the old ones, our Chief? The uh, ones that are are just past the expiry date are kept for a second emergency set um, while their firefighters initial or the main set are being cleaned. Anything more than three years old is destroyed. Thank you. Uh, further, uh, Chief, uh, for those that are listening, what, why does a uh, firefighter need turnout gear? Uh, it's personal protection equipment for um, um, heat exposure, uh, you need it to go inside. This stuff has cancer protection or cancer mitigation protection stuff built into it to uh, lower our exposure to our firefighters. It's part of a locking ensemble of a matching uh, part particulate hood, uh, boots, uh, that type of stuff, gloves. So basically heat protection so we can do the interior attacks if we have to. If we have to. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 10.6. Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2022 Municipal Levy in the amount of $30,366 be approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, this levy, is it based on the current? agreement on assessment or is it on the hybrid that's being proposed as was previously? The, the current agreement. Okay. Yeah. Really the only agreement. The one that was last signed. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.7. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services on July the 6th, July the 15th, 28th, be made to the 2022 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $110.86 and resulting reductions totaling $377.79. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.8. Whereas the 2022 capital budget included $16,000 for fire extinguisher replacement and the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 transferred from accumulated surplus of which $16,000 was to fund the purchase of said fire extinguishers. And whereas $13,834.71 was transferred from the accumulated surplus to the general operating fund for a previous purchase of fire extinguishers, but additional fire extinguishers have been purchased at a cost net of GST of $3,741.21. Therefore, be it resolved that $16,000 minus the amount previously transferred of $13,834.71, leaving $2,165.29 be transferred from the accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Bobbick. So I'm under the impression these are fire extinguishers purchased because the ones that we had were improperly inspected? Uh, Chief Fedorcha. So these are the tail end of the uh, bulk order that we <coughs> due to supply issues and the fact that most of them are uh, carbon 
not our sealed carbon dioxide extinguishers. Um, they're just coming in late. Okay, so we had to purchase all new fire extinguishers because they were not dated right by their inspections, or I guess I, I'm asking what happened to the old ones. Yes, sir, they're, they were uh, improperly inspected and properly tested. Uh, the old ones have been uh, uh, placed in our training sea can to be used by public works and our firefighters for live fire training. Okay. okay. Thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? It's scary. <clears throat> A frog. 11, uh, 11.1, resolved that by law 19, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the replacement of Swan River Fire Department Pumper 1 with all the required equipment as a local improvement be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councilor Morio. Um, I, I do appreciate the comments that people did um, forward in with their objections and uh, that came here <clears throat> this evening. Um, I, I feel that this is a purchase that uh, we need to start to process the RFP portion of it anyway. There's, there's still numerous uh, opportunities where should things change with our neighbors down the road. Um, this is, it's, it's not an overnight process that, to have this done. There's weeks of uh, RFP process and yeah. municipal board. Um, so I encourage uh, fellow council to uh, vote in favor of this uh, bylaw tonight to pass first reading. So at least this gives the administration and the fire chief the ability to start the RFP process and actually get us uh, um, concrete numbers uh, and design on a truck along with continuing the search uh, for potential new used ones <coughs> out there that fit uh, our requirements so, uh, but uh, as I feel this is uh, was mentioned before needs versus wants to me this is a, uh, a critical life-saving need um, there's a lot of wants that we can cut out of our next budget uh, to make up for this cost Okay. For the discussion, all in, uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven point two. Oh, we don't have nothing. Is that just a, a discussion item? Yeah, I have that in as information, so it could have gone under correspondence, but it did go under bylaws. This is just for council's information. It'll be upcoming in a, uh, an upcoming regular council meeting, but just for your information, take a look at what we've been. Can we just discuss this at the next Cal meeting? Absolutely. You can go on the Cal meeting. Councilor uh, DeLaurier. I like scenario two. But rather than say that they don't require a license, or I, I prefer that they say that if they pay the business tax, that the license fee is waived. That way, they, that way everybody is still licensed, right. and and we, we that way we can whatever for whatever purposes we use licensing for, they, they would still be a party to that purpose. Yeah. Um, but it'd be waived rather than as it stands right now that they don't require a license. Good point. So, uh, my. You know, without having further discussion with the rest of the council, my preference is in line with the administration's recommendation of, of, no, of number two if we made that change. That's a similar point. See if we're going to have Okay. All right, so then we will have this uh, at our next uh, call meeting then. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything before I move on? Okay. Then, if none, uh, 13. Resolve that pursuant to sections 152, 3 of the Municipal Act Council will go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have uh, town, uh, town, group plan. town group plan. Okay, was there anything else? Okay, 
Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9 12 p.m. Moved by Councilor Balbic, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.